Okay, let's put the amplifiers into position. They're relatively easy to pick up. Slide them on the butcher block. And we'll plug them into our movable junction box. We have three dedicated lines with a movable box to make setup easy for the multitudes of different positions of power outlets. And let's hook this up. We'll first start with the speaker cables and we're going to go in from above. Eight ohm tap and on the comet. Okay, we're going to get the input. This version of the 8180s is RCA input only. Now we're going to place the amplifier up on the valid points to help drain vibration. And we're going to get the other side here. And now we're going to get the front. We'll balance this like so. Okay, the amplifier is on and operational. Okay, let's set the bias and the global feedback. Global feedback is 20 decibels in the left position, and more modern day accepted practice is 11 decibels in the right position. So let's go right. Let's take a look at our bias. I have had the amps running with a fairly robust bias of about 120 MA. Bob prefers 80. So let's bring it down. Biasing an amplifier is very straightforward. You slot your screwdriver into the bias control knob, like that. Perfect fit. There you go. And you read the gauge, and you bring it down to 80. That's the Carver preferred bias point. Our tube complement is six KT eighty eights. And the input tubes twelve AX seven current source long tail balance pair. They directly couple to a second long tail balance pair consisting of a 12 AT7. The AT7 simply drives the grids of the KT88 output tubes through a pair of coupling caps that provide low frequency loop gain stability. The output tubes are arranged in a push pull parallel three up, three down, for a total of six in all. The screen grids are operated at approximately 325 volts and they have their own power supply. On this particular pair, Bob wound the output transformer himself. The Cherry 180s are up and ready to go. Let's take a listen. Bob Carver's Cherry 180s.